Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel. Wishing you a happy and healthy start to this nice Friday morning over here from a actually not so sunny Dubai, but that's okay because it's a lot more sunny than where we were coming from. It was negative 10 degrees Celsius in Helsinki. We don't give a crap about that now, do you? Because we're all here. We're all here to join hands and listen to some crypto magic internet money evangelism, of which I might have a little bit of that right now. So uh, because price action has been so damn boring in Bitcoin lands, I did want to go over a little bit of Bitcoin in the short term time frame. So that's really the only place that something's actually new and then actually go over a Bitcoin's brother or sister or who knows at this point. It's 2023, however. Ethereum. So with that in mind, I should let you know that the sale on the Crown Trading application will be um, will be stopping. It will be ending. That's right. Ending in 15 hours and 17 minutes and 29 seconds. So as the clock ticks down, I should probably let you know that if you're interested in any one of the programs or products, please, 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 I humbly request that you do watch the promotional videos that they come along with because they'll, they'll explain who they're for and who they're not for so you understand what you're getting yourself into. To answer a very common question that we've been getting, yes, the quant program is probably the one that I think most people are looking at right now that seems to be the uh that seems to be the one that is getting the most interest simply because it's just a bunch of back tested strategies uh actually 16 to be exact and that would be a good place for me to get into the actual analysis so we'll start it off with bitcoin um yesterday we were looking at a little bit of sideways or actually on the higher term time frames a lot of bit of sideways if you will but uh now that we are getting to the end of the week here i suppose there is one thing of interest on the six hour time frame there is some hidden bearish divergence building uh between the last few highs that we saw in the end of december to the highs that we're witnessing potentially right now what would actually confirm this hidden bearish divergence thus be getting targets back down to some crazy prices of 16,500 not seen since nearly a week ago <laughs> um, would be uh, a closure below about 16,000, what is this, 700 or just above 700 right there. That would actually confirm the hidden bearish divergence. And then, yes, probably looking at another move down somewhere around like 16,500 to maybe even as low as uh, 16,350 if things get really crazy. Anyways, uh, on the other side, if you're looking at the extremely short term time frames, um, hourly time frame is showing a little bit of a short term pop to the upside. I don't know how relevant this will be later on today, but yes, there is some hidden bullish divergence building alongside extreme lows on uh, on volatility over here as well. If we go and reference stochastic momentum, starting off with not the weekly, but maybe the 12 hour, we can see that the 12 hour is actually still gonna be pointed to the north side as long as it is fucking loading because Hotel internet, not the best internet of all time. There we go. Um, and it is showing, uh, yeah, 16,700 uh, pivot as of right now. So that'll change on the next closure. Currently, Bitcoin's trading about 100 bucks above that, which kind of is actually, like, given the price action for the last month or so, it's kind of a lot. Kind of, it's like a football field apart. Uh, six hour time frame is going to be showing, I believe, down to momentum as long as Bitcoin is below, yes, 16,900. So, you know, I am leaning towards an overall short term corrective move here, if you can call it that. Four hour time frame showing about the same pivot just below 16,900 and then the hourly is going to be going to very likely be flippy floppy and probably up to represent the very short or actually no it's actually down right now uh, as long as bitcoin is below 16,820 which it is currently about uh, 30 bucks below which is <laughs> quite a lot as of right now anyways uh, to um, to address perhaps a uh, an incoming question no this doesn't have anything to do with the long term analysis what we went over yesterday is still very much variable still very much viable and valid viable and valid is what I'm looking for, um, which essentially does suggest that over the next few weeks, you know, heading into the end of, of uh, January, almost a December right there, we're probably looking at some more sideways in the near term and in the uh, and then closer to the end of the month, probably Bitcoin does try for an upside move based off of the setup that we we're looking at yesterday. But, you know, short term, medium term sideways, you know, between kind of that 17,000 level and about 16,4, 16,5 region probably the name of the game and, you know, get ready for some more sandpaper, I suppose. Anyways, uh, I wanted to now go over into Ethereum simply because Ethereum does have something slightly different going on over here. Um, I do think that Ethereum is showing relative strength to Bitcoin and that can very easily be seen on the charts here because Ethereum never even made a lower low in the November dump party compared to what we did see in June. So 
ultimately Ethereum relatively strong compared to Bitcoin. So I do think that it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a little more of an interesting chart right now as my damn chart continues to reload. Anyways, uh, yes, so the what I wanted to go over right here is a little bit more of a specific setup um, to Ethereum, and that is this. We are witnessing extreme lows on five day, and also weekly, by the way, uh, volatility right here. And these extreme lows have seen have, have been seen many times in the full on history of Ethereum. And if we were to actually back test this and look for what the average move happens after these extreme lows are hit, well, I've gone ahead and already done that. There's been 13 times when it's been what I would define as extreme lows. And from those 13 times, the average move from those extreme lows has been about 54%, just over 54%, um, with a, you know, with a, with a standard deviation of about 23 and a half percent, which is, you know, kind of a lot. So that would give it a, a pretty major range for the first standard deviation at about 30%, maybe even all the way up to 77%. Now, I actually went through the data like one by one, obviously. And the majority of the upside moves, I did notice that those were on the lower end. In fact, a lot of them were in the 30% region, you know, the mid 30s. Um, and for the big downside moves, those were the ones that were close to like 60, 80, um, you know, over here on the upper end. So that would suggest that a Bitcoin, or Bitcoin, if Ethereum does go to the upside, uh, probably not gonna be on the upper end of the first standard deviation. It's probably gonna be on the lower end. But again, when we go and look at the average days taken to meet that next major high or low, the average is about 28 days with a standard deviation of about 12 days. So again, we're probably looking at, this would kind of imply end of January, early February, let's say. Um, and if we were to get some sort of a bias on direction, then what I've done is, is I've looked at the five day jewel oscillator and found that 10 out of 13 times the color and direction of the jewel oscillator correlated with the direction of the volatility expansion. So that would give it a close to 77% hit rate right there, as you can see. And what I thought was interesting about that is that as of right now, it is showing upside and it's actually having a, uh, a decently powerful signal right here. I wouldn't say it's full on perfect, but decently powerful enough. And it is balancing off these slower moving oscillators and it is actually having that light blue cyan color. Um, so that would say that the probability of an upside move is greater than the downside move. Again, the historical results for that would be, you know, right here. And, uh, and again, we're dealing with physics, not certainties, but ultimately, if it is gonna be an upside move, I would say, or at least the data would suggest that it's probably gonna be on the lower end of this. So what I would do is I would take um, uh, kind of this area over here and just see what 30% on top of price action would currently look like. And 30% puts Ethereum at about 1600, let's say. Um, if it goes for 40%, that would put it a little bit closer to 1650. You know, these are some tentacle areas, um, so, to, so to speak. What do I mean by that? Well, it's basically coming in alignment with that five day 55 exponential moving average and also the last local high that we did see in October before the last major dump. So ultimately, um, that's kind of where we're looking for if we do see an upside move born upon this particular setup. If it does uh, happen to occur to the downside, then do you want to know do you want to you probably don't want to know you probably don't want to know you probably definitely don't want to fucking know so i'll just leave it right there and uh and suggest that hey you know end of this month we do see several of the major setting up with these somewhat similar um uh, so, somewhat similar signatures that, wow, that's a fucking tongue twister uh, alliteration. Um, but uh, but yes, they're, they're all kind of like rhyming right now. And so that is a good signal, at least in my opinion, that, uh, you know, we're very likely to see, you know, this next major move um, probably around the end of this month, January. And probably, you know, again, as of right now, I, I do I do look at uh, what the data says, and the data says that the upside is more likely than the downside. So I'll leave things right there. I want to wish you the best of the best as always. It's a lovely Friday, I think, uh, at least hopefully. So, <laughs> so with that in mind, um, you know, well, do whatever the fuck you do on a Friday, I guess. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. Much love, take care, and see you hopefully soon.